If you'd like to support this channel, we invite you to check us out on Patreon. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up guys? I hope everybody's doing well and I hope that there's starting to be some excitement that spring's right around the corner. I'm starting to see signs that spring may be coming a little early for us here in West Texas this year. So I'm really excited to know that our season's on the way. And for those of you guys up north that may still have a little while, just hang in there. It's coming soon. And so today what I want to talk about is obviously you've probably seen our all over the internet already. It's time to start putting down pre-emergence and start thinking about that. And so in my preparation for doing that, I've discovered that I have a really bad problem with my tank sprayer. It's not holding pressure like it's supposed to. So today I'm gonna to walk you through some of my troubleshooting steps and see if we can determine what's wrong with this thing. It's been a little bit of a challenge, but I think I think I finally may have figured out what it might be. So I wanna walk us through that today and just kind of show you how these back, back flow regulators work and how you know the different parts of your spray setup actually works like what their function is and the effects it has if, if things aren't working properly so i'm gonna walk us through that today so let's go check out the sprayer i'll show you guys what's going on with it and let's see if we can figure it out all right guys so i was out the other night spraying a little bit of fertilizer on the backyard and the putting green here on the bent grass and what uh, had happened to me is i noticed that I typically spray at 40 PSI and I have a little mark here that I monitor and make sure that I'm, I've got an even flow and that you know the pressure is staying constant. But what was happening is as I was spraying, this was fluctuating up and down between 20 and 40 pounds. So you know you begin to think, you know, what's wrong with my pump, what's wrong with the strainers or a clog, you know, what's going on, right? Do I have something happening with my T-jets? But I think I finally figured out what it might be. And so I'm going to walk us through, you know, kind of what these parts do and how I determined what the issue might be, like what the actual cause is. Because there's a lot of moving parts to this thing because you've got a suction side, you've got a high pressure side, you've got a low pressure side. And so it can be really, really, I don't know, just kind of confusing and trying to figure out what's happening. But I think if you kind of go at it step by step and think about what's actually going on here, it's pretty easy to figure out. It's really a simple system. And so I'm gonna show you guys what was happening and uh, just kind of walk us through what's going on here. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what's happening. So I don't know if you can see right up here is where I've got my mark for 40 PSI. And what you'll notice is if I turn the pump on, and I increase my pressure. So now I've got liquid coming out the jets out here. But I keep increasing my pressure. You can see it just kind of hovers around 30, 35 PSI. And over time, it, like I said, it starts fluctuating back and forth between 20 and 35. It will not hold 40, and it will not get above 40 PSI. So that's when I began to realize I've got a problem. So when we take a look at this and try to figure out what's going on, you've got a suction side to start with, okay? So you're sucking liquid off the bottom of your tank, and that comes through a strainer. You really should have a strainer here just to keep things clean, and so if you find that you turn your pump on and you're just not getting any liquid at all, it's not circulating, nothing's happening, chances are you've got a leak where you're sucking some air here in the strainer. And so the strainer, you know, there's different types, but most all of them are going to have some kind of O-ring here. And so if this, if this guy is not snug or if, you know, the O-rings broke, then you're gonna have some issue because you're gonna be sucking up air and that's the first place to look to see if you've got an issue. So you wanna make sure it's good and snug, make sure the O-ring is good and you should have a good suction on the suction side of things. And so I'm actually spraying liquid so I know I've got good suction. And so if we move down the line, next thing in line is your pump. And so the next piece you need to pay attention to is how much PSI can your pump put out? And so I know that this one can put up to 60 PSI and that's why I often spray at 40 because it can't spray at its max at 60. And so I know that I should be getting 60 PSI on this pump. Now, what I showed you a minute ago on this pressure regulator is as it sucks water through and I increase the pressure on the, on the backflow valve here, you'll see that it will not stay or maintain above 30, 35 PSI. And so that's why I began to question, well, maybe there's something wrong with my pump. 
but I've noticed I found a way to prove that theory and we can prove that the pump works and we can also prove that the inside of the backflow regulator is working like it's supposed to. And so I'm gonna walk you through that process here. And so when you get down here to the backflow regulator, the way this thing works is you adjust your pressure back here on the back side of the regulator. And as you adjust that pressure, your pressure rises in your pressure gauge so you know, you know how much PSI you're putting out on your jets. And the way I was able to prove that this is working is when we come off the pump on the high side, high pressure side, okay, your inlet side's back over here like we just talked about. Water comes through the pump, comes out your high pressure side. Your high pressure side comes into a T right here before going to your jets. And so this area right here is where the pressure is applied. And the way I was able to prove that my one, my pump works, and two, that the backflow regulator works is by using this ball valve. This ball valve is in line with my output side going to my jets. And so I've got this loose right now because I've been troubleshooting with it. Otherwise, all this shouldn't be wobbling around. All right, so if I turn the back pressure off completely on this backflow valve, what should happen is the pump's gonna suck in water and start to circulate through the tank. So that's what you call agitation, is when it starts mixing your chemicals and all it is is just circulating your tank and mixing everything through. So when we turn this on, that's what should happen. You should hear the water come in the pump, and you should hear it being dumped back in the tank. And that's what's happening right now. We've got zero PSI because there's no back pressure on this valve. And so the way I was able to prove that things work is if I close this ball valve, that way no pressure can go out to my jet. And I start to increase the pressure on the back flow valve. You're gonna see the pressure on this regulator start to increase. So there's 20 and there's 40. Now I know that my pump can do 60 PSI. So there is 60 PSI and my pump is putting out the amount of pressure it's supposed to. And it also proves that my backflow valve is working like it's supposed to because it's putting the pressure up against the output side. So that's how I was able to prove that this is all working. Now, if this guy was not working like it's supposed to, you would close this ball valve and increase your pressure, but it would stay down here because it'd be letting water by. And that's where I would say, go check out the O-ring that's inside of this. And I'm gonna talk about how you open this up and check the O-ring that's inside of here. But that's how I was able to determine, that's how I was able to determine that the backflow regulator works is because I can close this, it puts up pressure, it lets pressure off like it's supposed to. So that proves that everything is working like it's supposed to, it proves my O-ring is good, and it proves that my pump is good and still putting up pressure like it's supposed to because when you have a loss of pressure, you know, I think for most of us, their first thought is the pump's not working. Something's wrong inside the pump. And, you know, that's just, that's just not the first place to start because as long as you take care of your pump and, and you know, you, you make sure you keep water out of it when you're done and you store it, things like that, just take care of it, then you're not gonna have an issue with your pump because all it is is just a little, it looks like a fan inside of here. That's all it is. Just a little impeller and it just spins and that's how it puts pressure up. So a pump is very simple. I mean, all it is is just a motor that spins that impeller. That's how it puts up pressure. So unless that gets damaged, you're not gonna have an issue with your pump. And so if you find your back pressure valve's not holding back pressure, the first place I would check is if you pull this pin out that holds these guts inside of here, you're able to take this piece out right here, and this piece has a rubber O-ring around the outside of it. And that rubber O-ring is what seals up inside of here to put and apply the back pressure against your pump to push the pressure out to your jets. And so that'd be the first place I would look to see if this O-ring is damaged or if it's just old and not able to seal up inside of here. So if you replace that, that should resolve any issue that you have with the back pressure valve holding back pressure against your pump. So, all right, now we've looked at all of that. We've proven that the pump's good. We've proven that the back pressure valve is good. We've checked the O-ring, make sure it's still indeed good. And so what's happening here? Well, 
what I think is going on is since I have full pressure happening in my system like it should, that means I've got a problem on the output side here. And if you start checking your hoses and different things, I did find I've got some white buildup down here on this T. So I know I've got some kind of leak, slow leak happening here, but that little bit of that leak is what's allowing uh, the pressure to kind of escape and not keep an even pressure against my tips. So these hoses are about two years old, so it's time to probably just change it all. And so that's what we're gonna do is cut all this loose and replace all these hoses. And that also give you guys a chance to kind of see how this goes together. And so I really think that that's gonna resolve our issue because I don't have any leaks on this quick connect coupler or anything damaged on my jets. You can also check in your jets. There's a rubber O-ring inside of these two. But if those were leaking, you would see water spewing out everywhere and your jets wouldn't be working correctly. So I don't think I have an issue with the jets. So I've either got a crack because it's been cold in my spray jet bodies, which we'll be able to see when we get these hoses off, or I think some of these leaks that are happening here on these tees, I think that's starting to add up and that's why I'm starting to lose some pressure. So let's uh, tear all this apart, place some of these hoses, and see if that resolves the issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start from this point, just take this quick connect coupling apart. And I'm gonna replace these hoses just to, as a quick, let's see if it fixes it. And uh, so all it is, is I've got these hose clamps on all my couplings, and it's just a six millimeter to take all this apart. Loosen off these hose clamps. And so another reason why I think there's an issue here too is I think the hoses are just old. And the reason I say that is whenever this stuff is new and everything's snug, things don't move real easily like this. And with these snug, I was still able to move these joints like this pretty easily. So I just know that the rubber's just not sealed up real well there and things are just rotten. So it's just time to change it all out and put some new hoses on it. And so you can wrestle this and pull everything apart if you want to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a slit in these hoses. That way all this just peels right off because I'm not gonna save these hoses. They're old and wore out. It's just time for some new ones. So just being careful not to cut into your couplings. You don't wanna damage those. Just put a little slit in the hose and then everything should come right, right apart for you pretty easy. Just like that. And here's another tip is don't destroy your hoses. Keep them laid out in the order that you take them off. You can use that as a template to cut your new hoses and make this process a lot faster than having to measure everything out and make it fit again. And so one concern that I did have is I thought there might be a problem with this T. I thought it might be cracked from being cold, but it appears to still be okay. And so I really think the issue is still just the hoses. I'm doing the same check on all these nozzle bodies to make sure there's not any cuts or cracks or leaks in them. And everything feels and looks like everything's still okay. And so hopefully, like I say, <laughs> it's just the hoses. All right, so I've got some new hose here. So all you need is a PVC pipe cutter, and that's the easiest way to cut clean lines through this hose instead of using like a razor blade and having to work through it and all that. This just slices right through it, makes this process so much easier. So I'm just gonna take my old pieces, kind of lay them out like so, mark them and cut them. You can see that just makes such a clean, clean cut and that way everything seals up really well on all your fittings and so when you're done with the old piece throw it away out of the way so you don't get them mixed up with your new pieces so to put all this together take a new piece make sure you put your hose clamps back on first And just make sure that you have your screw heads all facing the same direction. One, it just looks nicer and just makes it easier to put together. But another tip is, if you have some spray silicone, spray a little bit inside of these hoses right here on the ends. 
and it'll make this stuff slide on these fittings so much easier and you don't have to wrestle with it. And just work that hose up and down like you see me do with the swing pipe this summer. And just like that, everything goes on real smooth and easy. Alright, so once we got all that put back together, we're just going to tighten up these hose clamps. And you want to take it easy with these. So you'll snug them up a little bit to get them in position. But then what you want to see is it just squeeze down the rubber just a little bit. You don't want to crush it. You'll see and feel kind of these teeth bite into the rubber. And that's when you know you've got it sealed up really well. And so I was also very mindful about which direction I put these hose clamps because a hose clamp has this extra part of the clamp that sticks out. And so if you had that sticking up, you're gonna catch it on your hands, your clothes, and all that all the time. So I made sure that the excess hose clamp is actually pointed down, and that's why I'm, you see me tightening these up the way that I am from the bottom side. That way all that excess is down at the bottom. All right, so it's that simple to place all these hoses. It just takes a few minutes. So let's run back through our test process here and see if we've fixed our issue. All right, so let's walk back through what we did earlier. We've got the black pressure turned off. Got the ball valve closed. We're gonna turn the pump on. See it's putting up a little bit of pressure here. So again, increase the pressure, 40 PSI. We can see that everything's working here. Open that back flow valve. We increase the pressure here to get it set to 40 and it's actually holding at 40 psi this time all right so we changed the hoses down the downstream side so i want to go ahead and replace the rest of this system right here because it's old as well but that proves that we're on the right track and so i'm going to go ahead and change the rest of this out and hopefully the pressure will increase even more So same deal, again, I'm gonna recreate these hoses. And something I didn't do the first time I built this, I didn't make the hose leading down to the jets long enough. So I'm gonna actually add just a little bit to it. This time. Should make getting that boom on and off a little bit easier. Same as before, a little bit of silicone spray. Makes this stuff go on so much easier, especially when it's cold. So on these hose barred fittings, when you get your hose put on here, you just work that thing up and down. That thing slides on so easy. Make sure you put down the wrong on the right side. So this is wrong because this is your high pressure side. This is your outlet side. Easy to go on, extremely hard to get off. Let your high pressure side come into your backflow valve there. I keep saying backflow, back pressure. Backflow, backflow valve is a different type of valve. Got to put silicone on that. So it doesn't want to go. So now I have to work for it. All right. So same as before, I'm being mindful of the excess of the hose clamp facing down so it doesn't stag me in the hand, especially when I'm grabbing up here for this valve and different things. So just snug where you see the rubber start to pooch out just a little bit, but not too much. All right, so now we got all the hoses replaced. Let's walk back through this and see if we maintain 40 PSI and if we can actually get above 40 PSI this time. So here we are at zero. Increase pressure to 20. 
maintaining at 40, staying consistent like it ought to. I increase this more, there's 50 PSI. So with that maintaining 50 PSI, that proves that the pump's doing what's supposed to. Because you won't see it get above, much above 50, 55 PSI when you have a 60 PSI pump. So it's maintaining pressure. The jets all look good, everything's spraying consistently. So that's what it was, it's just these hoses were playing just enough liquid by to, to keep that pressure from staying consistent. So I think we've got this fixed. All right, so it's got that fixed. You know, sometimes you get lucky and it's just the simple things that fix the big problems. So it's just a little bit of rubber hose and some clamps. And that's all that's holding us up on this one. So, you know, when you usually have a problem like that, you usually think it's gonna be expensive. I gotta replace my pump and replace all, you know, the most expensive items. And so, you know, just let that be a lesson learned. Sometimes just start with the simple things and, and slow down, think through the processes, think about what each component's supposed to do to help you troubleshoot what's going on before you just jump to the conclusion of replacing all these expensive parts. So anyway, guys, hopefully that's got us set up for the upcoming season. We can get back to spraying the lawn, get some fertilizer and some pre-emergence on out here. And so if you guys are in the market for pre-emergence, I'll put a couple of links in the description below for some of the products I like to use. I mean, obviously there's Prodiamine out there that everybody uses, but the one I like to use and go to is the Dollop here. And the reason for that is it targets a lot more of the grassy weeds that you'll see in Bermuda lawns here in West Texas and here down the south. And that stuff just does a really great job at, at suppressing those things that, that are common. You'll see a lot of it right now in Bermuda while it's dormant. You see all the dark green patches and that's what it is. It's, it's cool season grasses or grassy weeds. It also does a really great job in my bent grass. It suppresses the goose grass and prevents it from getting on the putting green and it also does a great job of preventing that poania. And so I've had really great success at keeping my putting green really clean over the years by using that product. And so I'll put links to that in the description below. If you are interested in those products, please use those links. It does help us out. It doesn't cost you any more money, but it does help support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting our channel, I invite you to check us out on Patreon. We'd love to have you as part of our team just to help support us and help us bring more and more content to you guys. And so if you're not subscribed already, I want to invite you to do so. I know there's about 70% of you guys watching these videos that aren't subscribed. And what are you waiting for? You know, we're going to keep bringing some good content to you here in the spring and throughout the summer. And I'm going to just keep doing what we've been doing. And my goal is to share with you guys the things that no one else is talking about. You know, why we do what we do, how you calculate things, and just why you use the products we use. You know, it's one thing to chase all the latest trends out there to get the dark green and all. I mean, there's so many products you can buy and everybody's selling fertilizer now. And, and you know, I just want to help you guys that are new and even advanced just to kind of see through it all and understand what it is and how we do things and the reason behind what we do and that ultimately will save you guys money and still have an outstanding lawn that everybody wants to go for so that's my goal with this channel just to be transparent with you guys and bring you some information that of things that i wish i would have known years ago and so that's that's my goal with this channel and so guys, if you enjoyed this content, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that thumbs up button. I think it's going to do it for this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one.